Hello everyone, <clears throat> this is Dale Cantrell with Marineville Holiness Church. I want to bring you a sermon video today. Uh, it's going to be about courage and faith. Uh, I want to uh, say right off the get-go that uh, this is not an original idea. I got it from a book, uh, Chase the Line, by Mark Batterson, and that's what inspired me to do this. But yeah, it'll be good anyway. There's very few ideas that I have that's my original. Uh, I don't even know if there's any. I got it from somebody, my mother, my daddy, my first grade teacher, something, somebody. So anyway, uh, the scripture is Second Samuel 23, 20 that Mark Batterson wrote about, and it's, it inspired me. And it says, Benai, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two line men like men. He slew two line like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of the pit in time of snow. You know, First Peter 5, 8 through 11 says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called you into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you to be to him, be glory and dominion forever. Amen. Hebrews eleven, thirty-two through forty. I'm gonna read most of that, I guess. And what shall I more say? Of the time would fail to tell me of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in, in flight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and were others were to tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. And others had a trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover, bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered around in sheepskins and goatskins, been destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And, and all of these, having tamed a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Faith. Courage. Faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And courage is the ability to do something that frightens one. And uh, they're, they're close kin, I think. They're, uh, so, you know, every day in the jungle, the lion knows if he can't outrun the slowest gazelle, his family's going to starve or go hungry. Every day in the jungle, the gazelle knows that if he can't outrun the fastest lion, he will be the lion's meal for that day. Uh, Benai, uh, he, he started out as a um, bodyguard, and he went wound up being a commander-in-chief of, uh, of the army. And, um, you know, there's we read about things of courage, things I can think of right offhand. Daniel in the lion's den. Um, it took cor courage to do that. Um, the three Hebrew children, and they said, we're not careful to answer you, O king. They're just examples of courage. Gideon, then, how he was, the angel came down and called him, thou mighty man of valor. And he was hiding all the time in the wine's press. So if we have enough faith, we can muster up enough courage. We also can do some mighty acts. Might not be like Benaiah uh, that much, but um, we can, we can, do some things that uh, would help people. My, uh, I think we ought to have bold prayers. Uh, it's not a still, that's not an original idea of mine. Uh, bold prayers. You know, we pray prayers, Lord, Lord, just give me enough to get by. But instead, you know, he said, approach the throne of grace boldly that you may find grace to help in the time of need. I think we ought to pray bold prayers. Instead of saying, Lord, just help me have enough to get by. Say, Lord, help me have abundance that I can get by and help somebody else that's just barely getting by. 
uh, a bold prayer uh, would be, you, you know, when Elijah was going to be taken away and he tried to get Elisha to stay where he was. And he said, no, he wasn't going to leave him. And he said, well, what do you want when I leave? He could have said, well, you know, I've worked for you for the, all these years and I've never had a raise. I've never had a vacation. I sure would like that. He didn't say that. No, he said that I might have a double portion of your spirit. Uh, Elijah didn't get on to him for that, for asking that bold prayer. He didn't get on to him. He just um, said, if you see me when I go away, then you, you'll you get that. So um, I think God doesn't, doesn't mind us asking for bold, bold things. You know, shoot for the moon. If you miss, you may land among the stars. Um, there there was, uh, they, they, these men, they just made with what they had. Uh, their bare hands or a spear or a sword or whatever. Uh, you know, when Samson was there, he didn't say, uh, you know, if I just had a machine gun, boy, or a grenade, I could really wipe out. He killed a thousand Philistines, I believe it was, with the jawbone of an ass. Uh, I mean, that is really, that is really maximizing what you you have. So it's all through the Bible, uh, people that didn't have much. But what about the blind men? You know, Jesus would always ask people, what would you have me to do for you? You know, they'd say that I might have my sight. What if one of them had settled for less and didn't have courage or faith and said, you know, if I just had a seeing eye dog, you know, that, that really would be great. Or if I could learn to read in Braille. No, they didn't say that. They they had bold prayers, and I think that's what we need over in today's time. Uh, heard a story about a man. He walked past this house every day, and when he did, there was a big, ferocious-looking dog tied on a, a chain to a stake. And he he would think when he'd walk, he had to walk by it, and then he had to walk back by it to get home. And he thought, well, what if that, I just dread the day that that bulldog's going to get off that chain one of these days. And I don't know what I'm going to do. So anyway, that day he passed by, and sure enough, the bulldog was off the chain. And uh, he picked him up a brick. He was about to hit the bulldog with it. And the bulldog growled. And he was close enough. He looked, and the dog had no teeth. It's the things that you're afraid of. Is it just a dog with no teeth? Uh, you, you see, uh, we see bullies in school, and and we thought that they were invincible, and it wound up they was just as chicken as somebody else was. I thought about my dad. He said he was at the YMCA in Huntsville uh, on 8th Avenue, I believe it is, or 9th Avenue, and uh, he said the bully came, and he was going to hit him. He was making threats, and my dad said, I just put my hand out to block the blow and he stuck the bully in the eye and so it never bothered him anymore. Uh, I heard about another guy that went to Lee High School where I did and you know they we used to say come across that line um, you step across that line it's on and all that kind of stuff and they were doing their little formalities you know about step across the line, I'm going to knock your head off and all that kind of stuff. And this bully was um, saying like Goliath all the things he was going to do to this boy. And while he was making his preliminary speech, this boy just hauled off and hit him. And um, the bully never bothered him anymore. So um, I worked with a fellow. I, I used to be a trainer with Carnation Company. And uh, I'm not going to go much longer, so please hold with me. I don't think I am anyway. And uh, this boy, I, I was a trainer and uh, for 17 years. And I trained people in the first week, you know, the basics and things. And there's this boy, he was out of Montgomery, I believe. And he, um, I didn't train him, but we went to the first meeting. We had a company car. Uh, we paid $25, and we get to drive that car. I drove it up north to Meeting, up at Black Oak then, and, 
in Crown Point and whatever, and um, in Indiana, and uh, we, it cost us twenty five dollars. We had a gas card; we could fill it up anytime we wanted to, um, and twenty five dollars a month. And they went up to fifty before uh, I was while I was still employed with them. Fifty dollars a month—that's a great thing. So anyway, this boy, we had a district meeting in Birmingham. And this boy came here, just got his company car. He was just about to get out of training. Everything was looking lovely. And we had a, a district manager named Mr. Williams. And Mr. Williams was up that day giving that blood and guts speech, I call it. Uh, you know, carnation comes first. Uh, it has to come. It, 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 there's nothing that should be in front of carnation. Whatever it takes, get up at, in the middle of the night or whatever it took. And so after the meeting, this boy come up to Mr. Williams. He had his keys in his hand to the company car. And he said, Mr. Williams said, here's the keys to my company car. And Mr. Williams says, what are you doing, son? And he said, well, you made this speech and you said Carnation Company was first. And, uh, but it's not to me. God's first, my church is second, and my family's third. And when I look in my rearview mirror, I don't even see Carnation Company back there. I forgot a lot of people, but I never forget that boy's name. I never forgot him. So uh, is there anything that you would be willing to die for that you feel so strongly about? Uh, and, and there's many, many people. I was reading some in Hebrews. What about Rahab the harlot uh, that that befriended the spies that went to Jericho. And she asked that they would spare her fam her and her family. And they granted that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, she wound up being in the lineage of David and of Jesus uh, for that courageous act. So just have a little courage. Be like, uh, I know I, the Wizard of Oz, um, I used to show that to my children when they were little, or my grandkids. I guess it was my grandkids. And uh, there, there was a uh, a lion, a, a scarecrow. He needed a brain. There was a tin man. He needed the heart. And then there was a lion, and he needed c -c -c courage. I think courage is faith and courage. I lift you over a lot of things. And, um, and for myself, I would love to have courage and that I could live for God in the good times and the bad times. So I've enjoyed getting this to you today. I hope it's helped you. Uh, so again, this is Dale Cantrell with Renewable Holiness Church saying, I didn't re come to replace your ministry, you get in the church just to supplement if you needed it. And my phone number is 256-508-4410. Call me. Whenever you have something, and if you don't mind, leave me a message because you may not be in my contact book, and I may not know who it is that's calling. So until we do this next time, may God richly bless you is my prayer.